Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make homemade kettle chips. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. Today we are making potato chips at home. This recipe is surprisingly simple, and what you need to get started is one pound of russet potatoes. Now you do not need to peel your potatoes for today's recipe, which is nice because it saves a little bit of work, but you do want to wash them and pat them dry and cut off any little eyes that are forming or little sprouts that are forming before we begin. Now we're going to need to cut these potatoes into really fine slices. If you're really good with a knife, you can go ahead and do it with a knife. You want them to be super thin, like think paper thin. Now you also want them to be very similar in width. That way they cook evenly when we cook them in our oil. Like I said, you could do this with a knife, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you get yourself a mandolin. This is going to make the work so much faster. I use this thing all the time for making salads and just in my daily life anyway. And it's about $15 on Amazon. I'll make sure I leave a link for it in case you wanna grab yourself one if you don't already have one. Now I'm going to set this mandel into the thinnest setting possible. And I'm just going to cut my potato into really, really thin sections. And I want you to take a look at this. See, this is super thin. It's very difficult to get slices that are this thin and this even if you do it with a knife. We'll go ahead and we'll slice all of our potatoes. Of course, use your guard once you get really low, that way you don't cut yourself. And any piece of potato that's just, you just can't get it thin enough, you can just discard that end there. You don't wanna go so low that you end up cutting yourself. All right, so once you have your potatoes nicely sliced, we are going to want to submerge them in ice water for 30 minutes. Now you wanna soak your potatoes in the ice water because it helps draw the starches out and it's going to result in a crispier potato chip. So we'll let those potatoes sit, and they do need to sit for at least 30 minutes, but you can certainly let them sit longer. That would be totally fine. But while they're sitting about 15 minutes in, I like to start preparing my frying station. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a large, heavy bottom pot, and I'm using my Dutch oven. And we're going to fill this about two inches deep with vegetable oil. Now, anytime you're frying, temperature is really important, so you want to grab yourself a thermometer, and we're just going to fit this to the side of our pot, and I wanna make sure that the bottom of the thermometer is suspended in the oil, and it's not touching the bottom of the pot, which would give us a false reading, obviously. So I've got my thermometer in there. Now I'm going to turn my stove top to just below medium heat. You wanna heat your oil nice and slow, and this is going to take some time. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes or even longer for your oil to reach temperature. So our oil's getting to temperature, so now I like to set myself up a little station because frying can really be messy. You can get grease all over your countertops. So to prevent this, I grab myself a cookie sheet, and then I like to layer a piece of wax paper on top of that, and then just a couple paper towels, and this is going to catch any oil that soaks through. It's just gonna, like I said, make it really easy to clean up. And then I take a cooling rack, just set that there. Now the last thing you need is a strainer. I like to use one of these spiders. I love these things for frying. And you're gonna wanna have that at the ready. We're going to use this to lower our potatoes into the oil and to remove it from the oil. All right, now your oil should be heating and it should be heating to 375 degrees, by the way, if I didn't already say that. So once it's getting close to that, I like to go back to my potato chips and I'm just going to use a large strainer and I'm or a colander and I'm going to drain off the potatoes in my sink. And then I'm gonna bring them back and I'm gonna layer them over my board here and I wanna get them nice and dry. You're probably aware oil and water don't mix well together, so you really wanna get these nice and as dry as possible. I just layer them over some paper towels and then just try to blot them as dry as I can. It doesn't have to be 100%, but you do wanna get them pretty dry. Okay, so about now my oil is at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am going to take a handful of potatoes and I'm going to put them in my spider here and I'm just going to carefully lower them into the oil. And as you can see, that was probably a little bit too many potatoes. Um, you wanna be very careful. Don't use that many potatoes all your first time putting them in the pot because you run the risk of things overflowing. The bubbling is normal, that's going to happen, that's, some, that's partially happening because of the water on the potatoes, but maybe start with a little fewer potatoes than I did just there. So the bubbling is going to die down, and one thing I like to do is just periodically kind of stir the chips a little bit, that way they don't stick together as they're cooking. Now exactly how long it takes for your potato chips to finish cooking properly really depends on a lot of things like how many potatoes you add to the oil, um, how much oil's in your pot, how large your part, pot is, they're just many different factors. So rather than give you an exact time, um, I'd say it could take about 
three to five minutes for the potato chips to cook. But rather than go exactly by a timer, set a timer, I want you to look for a few different things. So you'll notice when your potatoes are done, they may be beginning to turn a light golden brown, but also you may, as you're stirring them with your strainer, you should be able to hear them click together a little bit. And they're also going to become stiff and like potato chips in the oil. They may curl up a bit on the ends and they're just going to hold their shape. So these have been in the oil for about four and a half minutes right now. So I'm going to very carefully lift them up with my strainer, try to drain off as much oil as possible, tilt it a little bit because you know they've got those crevices. I wanna get oil out of that. So hot oil is no joke. And then I'm just going to transfer this to my station I set up earlier. And just kind of scatter them over the cooling rack. Now, of course, our oil temperature has plummeted quite a bit because we added all of those potatoes to it. So before we do our next batch, we want to let our oil get back to 375 degrees. Once it's at 375, we'll go ahead and add another handful, a smaller handful this time of potatoes. And we're going to cook these as well. And then once these are done and they're looking like potato chips, holding their shape like potato chips and kind of clacking against each other in the pot, we will carefully remove these to our, cool, or our draining station as well. All right, now the chips just need to cool down before you can enjoy them, but of course, you wanna add some flavor. The easiest thing you can add is sea salt. I like to add freshly ground flaky sea salt. We'll just go ahead and scatter this over. And how much sea salt you need is really to taste. So I recommend just sprinkling some on, trying potato chip and adding more if needed. All right, and as I said, these cool pretty quickly, so let's go ahead and take a look. You can see they're nice and crisp. They snap for you, these are perfect. I think you guys are really going to love this recipe, and if you try it out, please let me know what you think. As you know, I always love hearing from you. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> so we're good.